Hello, everyone. This is Mark Garapi from Hissy AGE with another episode of the Hissy Wrap Up. I have my three partners with me today to discuss a wonderful resource called the Zapre Cool FGA. Welcome, Emily, Giovanna, and Abby. It's great to talk to you. Hi. Hey. Hello. Um, before we start with the subject at hand, uh, please introduce yourselves. Emily, why don't you go first? Sure. Hi, I'm Emily. I'm one of the members of the wonderful Chrissy team. My role this year um, is related to Project RISE, which is all about supporting teachers um, in the creation of digital learning resources that are specifically meant for our adult ed learners and our Quebec curriculum. Great. Uh, Ms. Giovanna, you're next. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Like I said, I'm Giovanna, I also go by Joanne, and I'm one of the members of the uh, Recitage team as well. And I offer on-demand uh, center support. This year has been a little, uh, you know, behind the scenes-ish, but I mean, I, it's given us the opportunity to, um, to see more centers more frequently, uh, more remote centers. So I think um, it's the way it's going to be, but it's nice to be here. Great. Uh, last but certainly not least, Abby. So my name is Abby Spector, and this year my dossier is Accessibility and Assistive Tech, or A2T for short, and it's really all about helping center support teams and teachers with accessibility and assistive tech. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, as, you, as you just heard, the ACH team members have different dossiers, but we always strive to work together. Collaboration is key with ACAGE. I made that mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about the Zapricou FGA. Without going into too many details, Zapricou <laughs> is a virtual gathering place for different communities across the province. Last year, the English pedagogical consultants, with the help of the Kipchak Pedagogical and us, of course, started the Anglophone community on Zapricou with the goal of reaching out to teachers and giving them a space to connect with each other. There, are, there were several guest speakers and they are whom we will be focusing on in this podcast. All right, so let's start with uh, Jewel Perlin, who was talking about screen fatigue on March 29th, 2020. Abby, could you talk about this one? Yeah, I'll jump in with a couple of points. So obviously it was a long workshop and it's hard to distill it down to a couple of sentences, but I'm gonna focus on three different areas. One of the things she talked about was creating a workspace. And that really resonated with me because I find working at home I really need to have a clean area. And I'm not just talking about the space behind my webcam. I will every morning go to my desk and clean it up to make sure that I'm not working in a pile of papers. And that really kind of helps me work throughout the day and not feel kind of overburdened about being in the same space all the time. Hmm. Another point that she brought up was building in breaks. And um, I like what she said about that, you know, how important it is to have these breaks and some tangible takeaways I can have from that is, you know, if you're in a meeting, being a little bit more vocal about ensuring we have those breaks. And if you're scheduling something with somebody, you might just ask them, hey, are, are you finishing your next meeting at two? Why don't we meet at 2.15? So, you know, giving, being kind to others and making sure that there's, you know, a buffer space between meetings. And then the last one also really resonated with me. She talked about a lack of focus and resisting the urge to multitask. And I think that's easier said than done. I think when we're in front of our computers all day, um, you know, sometimes it's easy to start checking your emails or, or working on a presentation. And I found for me, a simple solution is just to get up. I have a pair of wireless headphones, but sometimes I'm on speakers, you know, just getting up and walking away from the keyboard and continuing to listen to that meeting or presentation really helps me fight the urge to start multitasking. And yeah, those are my three main points. Well, thanks a lot. I think that we've all uh, sort of had to deal with all of these things. Um, breaks are something, you know, you were talking about the 2 to 2.15. Two That's something I, we, we try to be conscious about when we're meeting uh, amongst ourselves. Uh, because since we all have different schedules, sometimes, uh, you know, we meet between meetings and it's good to give at least one person a break. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Abby. So check it out on Après Cours, uh, uh, FGA. So the next workshop uh, was also on wellness and it was about ergonomics with Yo-Yo Kwok on April 22nd, 2021. Emily, uh, you were instrumental in getting her to come talk to us, weren't you? 
<laughs> yeah. So my mom is actually a physio. So she's the one who put me in touch with a yo-yo. Um, and her workshop I found super helpful because um, I was experiencing like some pain in my body from being at my desk all the time. Um, and so like her tips were really, really helpful and practical. So she had some great visuals in her presentation that really kind of highlighted that you really want to be kind of like 90 degree angles with your arms, your hips, your knees, and your feet. Uh, so I definitely recommend going to check that out. And one of the things that I know a lot of teachers, um, if they've been doing online teaching or hybrid teaching is they've got like two screens going on. And so she talked about how like the placement of that screen can impact the way that like your neck, um, like if you're having, experiencing neck pain, changing the way that that screen is organized can help decrease that pain. And like um, Jewel, she also talked about breaks you, that you should like get up and have movement breaks every once in a while or do like a little bit of desk yoga to give your body a little bit of a break. So that was helpful. But um, even though I went out and bought like an expensive office chair <laughs> and stuff like this, she had like a lot of quick, easy fix um, solutions like um, putting a towel behind your back if you've got lower back problems or, you know, raising your computer to eye level, like putting a couple of like textbooks or something underneath it. Um, you know, I had like a cardboard box for my feet at one point because I'm super short. So just easy things um, that you can do to, to help your body be a little bit more comfortable as we're, um, you know, being in front of our computers more often. Yeah, what I did like about, um, and I wasn't there uh, at the actual workshop, so I did, uh, I, I watched the recording and it was very helpful to me. And what I do find that's interesting, certainly about uh, Yo-Yo's um, uh, workshop was that this is stuff that people can actually use in, in a class if you're, whether you're, you know, mm -hmm. online or in a classroom, some of these principles, you know, work in both uh, environments. All right, well, thanks a lot. Um, thanks a lot, I mean, The time stamping, of course, is really helpful. So you can go to exactly the section you want to on après cool. And uh, the documentation, as you say, Emily, was great. Yeah. All right, so last one is Sarah Chenette. And uh, Giovanna's gonna talk to us about that. Um, talking about motivational and organizational strategies with her students on, Jan on June 1st, pardon me, June 1st, 2021. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, this workshop, uh, Giovanna? Right, so at the time of this workshop, I was recovering from a hip surgery, so I could not attend the workshop live. Yeah. Uh, but this is the beauty of the après cours. They're recorded, timestamped, and the resources are compiled in a collaborative document for future use. Vishal does all the work for us. So in preparation for today's discussion, I watched Sarah's presentation, and I familiarized myself with some of the resources that she shared. I was truly grateful and humbled by Sarah's generosity and reflection, like teacher rock star for sure. So a little bit about Sarah. She's an individualized ELA teacher and she teaches about 16 courses. And since the pandemic, she's been teaching in either a hybrid or online setting, depending on the measures, using Teams. Talk about having your work cut out for you. And by paying attention to four main concepts of motivation, Sarah has been able to <laughs> thrive rather than survive. And what's great is that these measures can be adopted uh, for different contexts. So Google boards or whole class settings and for various disciplines. So about the workshop. So the workshop is called Motivation in Time of Corona, but these strategies are not limited to use during the pandemic. Uh, in this après cours, Sarah focuses on four concepts that she noticed uh, resurfacing when she was investigating the concept of motivation. And these are accountability, which she also calls learner responsibility, goal setting, choice, and providing a safe environment. I highly recommend this workshop because Sarah explicitly models how she addresses each concept and offers anecdotes about her own motivation in adopting these strategies. Uh, like she said, it's hard. Uh, but she shared templates and resources. Really, you won't be sorry. Uh, thanks, Giovanna. I, I think that it's important to view this workshop because it shows that a little forethought goes a long way in the online and in-class teaching world. 
So it's right. all about the preparation. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, what, what was really interesting was Sarah's reflection. I mean, it's not like a one and done. Uh, she tweaked these uh, practices over time. And as she mentions, she will continue to adapt uh, and revise these practices as needed. Oh, that's great. Well, folks, um, I'd like to thank my racy partners for taking the time to chat about uh, the self-directed professional development resource called Aprecourt FGA. You can find the link to this Aprecourt on our website or simply Google Aprecourt FGA and you'll find it. Keep your fingers on the keyboard because that is where the future of education lies. Mm -hmm.